Hello crafty friends, welcome to this card making video. Today I'm going to use this stamp and die set to create some cards for you. I found this set at a charity shop and after a bit of research I discovered that it's made by Crafters Companion and it's part of their Edibles collection. So the die cuts the word thinking but not along the bottom so when you cut it you get the word thinking still attached to the card that you've cut it from. You also get a stamp that you can use. This one is supposed to be, I was thinking of you today, but you could mask off the today if you want and just have, I was thinking of you. Or you could not have the, I was, you could just have thinking of you today or thinking of you. So it's a pretty versatile little set. So I'm gonna try this set out in a couple of ways and show you a few cards that you can make using this. So I've got a panel of smooth white card here and I want to put my die about there. I'm just going to make a light pencil mark so I know where that is. Actually I'll make it a bit darker because that's a bit pale. And now I've got my largest circle die here and I'm going to place that on there like that in the middle, maybe down a little bit. I hold that in place with some washi and we're going to do some partial die cutting. I'm going to use my cuttle bug plates to do my partial die cutting and I'm going to line up the pencil marks with the end of the plate so hopefully it will only cut to the pencil mark. Right, it's not gone all the way but it's gone the same amount either side. I'm going to erase that pencil mark now I'm going to line up my thinking so that the edge of the cut lines up more or less with the bottom of the semicircle that I've just cut. So we can take that out of there. We can poke out the little holes. It hasn't quite met up here but I can use a craft knife just to extend the line. And I'll just put that on a bit of black paper so you can see what it looks like. We've got some bits missing here and here, but it still reads because they're the right shape. Off camera, I cut this into a panel with a stitched rectangle die. And now I'm gonna turn it into a shaker card, I think. I'm gonna run around the outside of the aperture that I've created using some tape runner. I'm right at the end of this tape runner, so it's a bit stubborn. There's still plenty left. When it gets to the end, it gets a bit tight and doesn't always come out easily. To help stick the letters down, I'm going to put some Zig two-way glue on the back. This dries tacky, so once it's gone clear, I'll put the acetate over the back and it should stick the letters in place onto the acetate so they don't flap around. If you were setting out to make a shaker card, you could put your whole panel on a piece of double-sided sticky and cut it out that way. And then everything would be sticky when you peeled the release paper off. So I think that's ready now. I'll put the acetate over the aperture and cut it down. And I can save that bit for another day. To create a bit of lift, so that my shaky bits have some room to shake. I'll add some foam. This is very thin foam, so it's not gonna be a thick shaker. And I've got some foam that's the same depth, but is thinner, if you see what I mean. And this, I'm gonna run around the edge of the aperture. And this should stop the shaky bits from escaping. And I'll put some foam on the back of some of the letters just to provide a little bit of support. For the shaky bits, I'm just going to use some glitter. I've got some chunky iridescent glitter here. To create the shaker background, I've got this from my box of backgrounds and bits. I think I made this by doing some very wet stamping with a rubber stamp, drying it and then heat embossing it in white with a crackle stamp. And that 
fits nicely over there to trim off the bit that's overhanging. Now I'll add some tape to this so I can stick it on the front of a card. I want to stamp on here and it's fairly firm because there's some foam tape under there. If I thought about it, I would have stamped it before I constructed a shaker. I just want to turn this into a thinking of you card rather than a I was thinking of you today card. So I can snip my stamp. It won't stop me using it as intended. So I can always put it back together on a stamp block or in a stamp positioner like that. And this is where it all goes horribly wrong because I've decided to heat emboss it. So this is definitely something that you should do before you construct your shaker card. But hey ho, so I've stamped that in embossing ink and it looks fine. And I think silver, that works with the cool colours and the iridescent glitter. And to get this to melt as quickly as possible so it doesn't warp the card or I reduce the risk of warping, I'm going to let my heat tool heat up really well before I point it at my card. That way I will minimise the amount of time I need to have it pointing at the card. There we have a very clean and simple shaker card. Obviously you could embellish that to your heart's content if it was too clean and simple for you. You could add maybe some stitching around the outside, use a different kind of shape. You could add some flowers, maybe some silver flowers or something up there. But that is very clean, very simple, but still interactive and conveys its message. For my next card, I thought I would jazz things up so this is not going to end up clean and simple at all. So what I did was I took a piece of smooth white cardstock, cut the thinking from it, and then I added some colour. So I've got Salvage Patina Distress Oxide here, and I'm just blending that over the panel. You could colour the piece of paper before cutting, but sometimes when you do the cut and then the colouring, you get a little bit more definition around the edge of the cutting because the bristles of the brush kind of catch the edge of the die cut and leave a little bit more ink there. So you get a little bit of a different effect when you colour after you've cut. Next, I smooshed on some peacock feathers. So I put the peacock feathers on my glass mat, added some water to turn it into a paint, picked it up with my smusher and then smushed it all over the salvage patina. And then I dried that with my hairdryer. If you'd like to know how to make a smusher, I do have a video for that and I will leave a link in this video's description. Next, I wanted to lighten this a bit. So I put some white acrylic paint on my mat added some water again to make it a bit runnier and then picked that up with my smusher and then smushed it all over. So you don't just have to smush with inks, you can smush with acrylic paint. Depending on how runny it is, you might need to add a lot of water, but it still smushes quite well. I did do two layers just to lighten things up a lot. Finally, I spattered on some teal coloured metallic paint. This paint is from my Hybrid Prima Metallic Accents palette. I took my favourite colours from the Originals palette and the Pastels palette and put them in one palette. Once that was all dry, I took a metal ruler and a craft knife and just extended the cut at the bottom of the thinking so that I could separate the two sides of the panel. And to make my cut line look as if it had been die cut, I just beveled the edges with my embossing tool. And then I knocked the two pieces together, drew a pencil line along the edge of the bottom piece. And then I used my guillotine to cut along the pencil line to give me a strip the same depth as the strip that has the thinking on the top. I wanted to put a little bit of an edge underneath the thinking, so I masked off the word and then masked off the bottom of the little strip. And then I put some embossing ink using an embossing pen over that little gap and then added some gold embossing powder and heat embossed that. 
Once that was cooled and set, I removed the washi tape and that left me with a lovely clean strip of gold along the top of that card, sort of separating the word thinking from the bottom strip as it were. I also heat embossed a gold strip along the bottom of the other strip of coloured paper and I heat embossed the sentiment. If you haven't got an edible die like this, you could just use a word die and attempt some partial die cutting, or you could just die cut your word and stick it onto a bit of card at the bottom. You could also die cut individual letters to make a word and stick those along at the bottom. My plan with this card was to have an aperture behind the thinking in between the two strips that I'd made. But I wanted some texture, so I took a 3D embossing folder and embossed a piece of smooth white card. I stuck that to a card blank and then I added my colourful strips. And to adhere these two colourful strips to my 3D embossed piece, I used tape runner and glue. And that just makes sure there's enough adhesive on the back making contact with the embossed panel. As a finishing touch, I added some crystal glaze to the word. This added a bit of dimension and a bit of gloss, just to make it stand out a bit from the colourful strips above and below. I then took some biodegradable gold glitter and gently sprinkled that over the crystal glaze. So now my word is sparkly and glossy. For my third and final card in this video, I took some mixed media paper, popped it on my grip mat, and then stenciled through it using salvage patina distress oxide and some lucky clover distress oxide. My intention with this was not to create a stenciled piece, but just to get some ink on my stencil. So the bit of paper that I've got here, I put to one side for use at a later date. But when I finished my blending, I took the stencil, spritzed it with some shimmery water and then pressed it down onto another piece of mixed media paper. So I used the stencil a bit like a stamp. This gave me a lovely ethereal light and airy pattern on my paper. I set that aside to dry and brought in another piece of mixed media paper that I'd practiced on earlier. So it's got a bit of a pattern on it, but I really just wanted something to put some more salvage patina on. And this is what I'm gonna cut my word out from. So I use salvage patina, lucky clover, and then I brought in a bit of peacock feathers to add some darkness to the card to intensify the color a bit. After that, I ran my bit of paper through the die cutting machine with the thinking die, but this time I sliced all the way along the bottom of the word so that I could use the word on its own without the bit of paper at the bottom. To make it look like the whole thing had been die cut rather than sliced, I ran my embossing tool along the cut edge again. And then I brought in that bit of paper that I made by stamping with a stencil and I used a stitched banner die to die cut out a shape. I then stuck my thinking onto this using some very thin craft foam and that just brought in a little bit of dimension. It was quite easy once I stopped sticking myself to the word to stick the letter down straight because of the stitched edge of the die cut. I could line up the bottom of the letters with that. Next, I brought in a panel of smooth white cardstock and stamped the sentiment on using sticky embossing ink and I heat embossed that in gold. Once that was cooled and set, I used tape runner to stick the banner in between the two pieces of the sentiment using my T-square ruler to get it nice and straight on the card. And I felt the card needed just a little bit of something else to finish it off. So I used crystal glaze again to add some gloss and dimension to my word, the thinking. And then I took some scraps of the paper that I cut the thinking from and used my dot die to cut some dots so I could make some homemade enamel dots. I then arranged these in a diagonal from the top left to the bottom right because that's the flow that was already there. 
I used matte gel medium to stick these down just in case some splurged out the side. I didn't want glossy smears around my enamel dots. And then I added some crystal glaze on top of those and sprinkled on some more of the biodegradable gold glitter for a bit of extra shimmer and shine. I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas of things you could do with stamps and dies that you already have in your stash. If it has, please do let me know in the comments, like, subscribe, ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon for another card making video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.